22 teams have arrived in Orlando, including your favorite team, Clipper Nation. It is now time for your Clippers digital report. The Clippers taking the court for their very first practice in almost four months, the coronavirus, the quarantine, there is a lot that has happened over the last four months and a lot for one coach to deal with. Now the Clippers are on the court, but Kawhi Leonard will be joining the team some point tonight. He is en route to Orlando, dealing with the bubble, unique circumstances. Of course, the team dealing with a long layoff, a team that has new pieces, they're dealing with chemistry and Doc Rivers, he can handle these unique circumstances. Well, as far as uh, the team and, and going into this situation, it's awkward for everybody, you know, uh, but we've decided to come here. We all had to make an individual decision to come down to Orlando. And once we got here, we decided that this is our mission. You know, um, this is, you know, we're, we're just here. We're going to try to drown out all stuff uh, that distracts us from our goal. Uh, and then socially, we have a chance to take a stand uh and, and send out a message to everyone so uh leadership wise i think not just me but the entire organization including jerry are all involved in that part of it as far as the basketball part uh it's really the same thing you know uh, once you get on the floor uh we just got to get back into our rhythm um and i think that would be the first thing conditioning and, and rhythm all right, so uh, the Clippers officially getting ready for this NBA restart. I'm Christina Pig, now joined by the one, the only, Mike Fratello. And Mike, we heard Doc Rivers there. He just met with the media via Zoom, the new normal out there in the bubble in Orlando. But what was your takeaway from how the team and how the coaching staff has to deal with such a unique experience with uh, them being in Orlando? Doc's point, I believe, is that we asked you if you want to go to Orlando, do you want to be a part of this? And once collectively as a team, we agreed we're going, we're going to compete for an NBA championship. Once that decision was made, that's behind us now. We are all in together. This isn't like oh, I'm halfway in, I'm halfway out. This is no, I am all in on that. That's why we made the decision to go there. And that's what Doc explained to the media, uh, that we came, we're ready to go now after a championship. Now, Mike, you've had four months. You've dealt with Zoom calls and text messaging and a million different ways to communicate with your players except in person. So when you finally have that moment, it's something that you've thought about and it's something you asked Doc Rivers about today. I knew how much time Doc had to think about the opening night, meeting the team. What are you going to say? Because that might be the most important thing that you say the entire time you're in Orlando. So every day I'm sure Doc w woke up and thought about what am I delivering in my opening message? Remember, you don't know where you're going to be delivering the opening message, what the situation is, the surroundings are. Will everybody be there or won't everybody be there at the time you deliver the message? But it has to be impactful. It has to be something that carries this team through this training camp, the 20 days getting ready for the opening game. So let's take a listen to what Doc had to say about delivering that message. We did it when we got, when we arrived here, uh, to the hotel before we got off the bus, you know, I, I walked on the back and I talked to each guy and the team as a group about why we were here. Um, you know, and uh, the message is, is very, we're on a mission and we've been deployed. Uh, nothing's going to distract us. Uh, we're not going to complain about anything. Uh, I, right now, personally, I think it's been an impressive, when you watch what the NBA has done to try to pull this off, uh, it's it's really impressive, and and so we accept, we we love it. Uh, we're here, and, and and that's it. Like Mike, that's our message. Is this is a business trip for us? Well, this is a team that is on a mission and a team that is on a business trip. Mike, what did you think about the message and how it was delivered from Doc? Let's think about where the message was delivered on the bus, walking down the aisle stopping and talking individually to each player, 
And then after we finished that, the collective message was delivered. And two words stand out in my mind that I've heard over and over again with this team. That is toughness and togetherness, or we're going to get somebody to a championship level. And we hear over and over again the players talking about how the line of communication has been so open the entire time waiting to get to Orlando. And Doc just followed up on that, saying we're here tonight. We're still out on our mission to win a world championship. Well, yeah, this is certainly a team that plays together. They've got stars and Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And Paul George was efficient this year, but he had some nagging injuries. A year ago, he had two shoulder surgeries, started the season late, and despite taking the court this season, was still rehabbing his shoulders. The time off, although away from the team, allowed him some time to get healthy. I had some insecurities uh, to start the season off. I had insecurities throughout the season just because I wasn't all the way 100. My shoulder didn't feel back to 100. Um, everything was kind of just winging it and, and, and hoping that, um, believing in the doctors that everything they were telling me was going to come, you know, into this this moment now where I feel great, no shoulder issues. Um, I mean, the whole season all the way up until maybe a month or two ago, I had to always do you know, shoulder rehab stuff and warming the shoulder up and just so much went into, you know, stuff I had to do before I actually took, you know, a foot on the floor um, to where now I feel great again. I feel great just going on the court and shooting and doing regular things. So um, I'm really just confident into that and uh, feeling back to myself again. Well, that certainly had to make Clipper fans very happy to hear that Paul George stayed in great shape, but not only that, he feels great coming into Orlando. Mike, what did you take away from what Paul said about having that confidence again in his shoulders? First of all, you can tell the players have not done a lot of interviews for quite a while because they have so much to say. He was eloquent in his delivery and the things that he had to tell us. And, you know, a player, because of the mind games that injuries play with them, when they're feeling good, when they're feeling healthy, they play well. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking about going out and trying to get one of those tonal machines that he gave so much credit to keeping his body in shape. Paul George is ready to go. Mentally, he's ready because physically, he's in top shape. Oh, yeah. You know it's been a long time when the guys get excited to hear our voices and answer questions. But, look, one thing that is for sure is that this team plans on having an extended stay in Orlando because... Reggie Jackson got a chance to talk about what his teammates brought to Orlando. And it sounds like the guys were almost getting ready for their college dorm, setting their rooms up. Here's what they brought. Man, I mean, everybody's been bringing their game systems. Everybody's been bringing snacks and trying to figure things out. But uh, I think Trez is one of the, the biggest forward thinkers. Um, he brought a portable sauna which is the coolest thing. So got to see that. And then uh, not gonna lie, Lou brought his uh, studio. So um, hopefully after this championship run, he'll, he'll drop an EP talking about this whole experience here at Disney. So one thing you have to credit these Clippers team is these guys came prepared. They had plenty of time to figure out what they were going to bring to Orlando. Lou Williams will most likely come out of this with a brand new album and Trez is prepared. Mike Fratello, these guys, are making the best of the bubble. So if you were in Orlando, what would you bring for three months stay? Christina, you would see a number of square brown cardboard boxes that say handle with care because inside are the jars of spaghetti sauce that I would have to have with me. Can you imagine an Italian locked up for four months? <laughs> sauce that he likes? Come on. Oh, no, no, no. I Look, I understand. I mean, Patrick Beverly had about 80 T-shirts. And so I could not imagine Mike Fratello without his spaghetti sauce. The question is, would you share? I'm a nice guy. Of course I would share. <laughs> it's our family. What, are you kidding me? We're all in the family. By the end of the, the quarantine and the three months in the bubble, everyone is going to know the secret recipes as well. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for joining us. 
Clipper basketball is back. We are counting down the days to the restart of the season. We will also be back tomorrow with another Clippers digital report and another discussion about practice. Thanks for watching.